Ahmed is playing a lottery game where he must pick two numbers from 0 to 9 and then one letter out of the 26 letter English alphabet. He may choose the same number both times. If his ticket matches the two numbers and one letter drawn in order, he wins the grand prize and receives $10,405. If just his letter matches, but one of both one or both of his numbers do not match, he wins the small prize of $100. Under any other outcome, he loses and receives nothing. The game costs him $5 to play. So under any other outcome, he he loses and receives nothing. He has chosen the ticket 04R. So we're assuming he bought he he's paying the $5 to play and he picks the ticket 04R. So let's say we define a random variable x. And let's say that this random variable is the, the net profit, the net profit from playing, from playing this, this lottery game. What is the expected from I guess we could even say the expected from the net the, the net profit from playing 04R. So Ahmed's particular ticket right over here. So let's just say x is the random variable. It's the net profit from playing this ticket. What I want to think about in this video is what is the expected value of that? What is the expected value of that? What is the expected net profit from playing 04R? And I encourage you to pause the video and, and think through it on your own. So let's think about what expected value is. It's the probability of each of those outcomes times the net profit from, from those outcomes. So there's the probability of the grand prize. So I can write that as the, let me do that in that red color. So there is the probability of getting the grand prize. And now what would times his net payoff from the grand prize? What would that be? Well, he gets $10,405, but that's not his net payoff, his or his net profit, I should say. His net profit is what he gets minus what he paid to play. So he paid $5 to play. So this would be, so that's that. So plus, plus the probability of getting the small prize, probability of the small prize times the payoff of the small prize, which is going to be $100, or times the net profit, I guess, if you get the small prize. So you get a payoff of 100 minus you had to pay, minus you had to pay $5 to play. And then finally, you have the probability the probability of neither, so you're essentially not winning. And there, in that situation, what is the net, what is the net profit? Well, in that situation, your net profit is negative five. You paid five dollars and you got nothing in return. So to figure out the expected value, you just have to figure out these probabilities. So what's the probability of the grand prize? Let me do that over here. Probability of a grand prize. Well, the probability that he gets the first letter right is one in ten. There's 10 digits there. Probability he gets the second letter right is 1 in 10. These are all independent. And probability he gets the letter right, there's 26 equally likely letters that might be in the actual one, so he has a 1 in 26 chance of that one as well. So the probability of the grand prize is 1 in, what is this, 2600. 1 in 2600. So this is 1 in 2600. Now what's the probability of getting the small prize? probability of the small small prize. Well, let's see. He has a 1 in 26 chance. The small prize is getting the letter right, getting the letter right, but not getting both of the numbers right. So he has a 1 in 26 chance of getting the letter right. But this isn't, we're not done here just with the 1 in 26. Because he has a 1 in 20, this 1 in 26, this includes all the scenarios where he gets the letter right. Including the scenarios where he wins the grand prize, where he gets the letter and he gets the two numbers right. So what we need to do is we need to subtract out the situation, the probability of getting the two numbers, the, getting the letter and the two numbers right. And we already know what that is. It's 1 in 2600. So it's 1 in 26 minus 1 in 2600. The reason why I have to subtract out at this 2600 is, is just one, he has a 1 in 26 chance of getting this letter right. So that includes, that includes the scenario where he gets everything. 
where he gets everything, right? But the small prize is only where you get the letter and one or none of these. If you get both of these, then you're in the grand prize case. So you essentially have to subtract out the probability that you won the grand prize, that you got all three of them to figure out the probability of the small prize. Now, what's the probability of essentially losing? The probability of neither. The probability of neither. Well, it's, it's just kind of, you know, that's everything else. So if it would be one minus these probabilities right over here. So it would be one minus the probability of the small prize, the probability of the small, minus the probability of the grand. These are the possible outcomes, so they have to add up to one or 100%. So this is one minus probability of small, minus, minus probability of large, minus probability of large, or I said not grand prize, grand grand prize. So let's fill this in. So the probability of the small one, this right over, oh, I'm using that red too much. This right over here is 1 in 26 minus 1 in 2600, 1 in 2600. And then this right over here is 1 minus the small, which is 1 in 26 minus 1 in 2600, minus 1 in 2600, minus 1 in 2600. And this simplifies to, let's see, this is 1 minus 1 over 26 plus 1 in 2600 plus or minus 1 in 2600. These cancel and you're left with 1 minus 1 in 1 in 26. Now why does that make why does this make sense? Well, the way you lose, it, the way you get nothing is if you get the letter wrong. So if you get, you have a 1 in 26 chance of getting the letter right, and then you're going to be in one of these two categories, or you have a 1 minus 126, which is equal to 25 out of 26, you have a 25 and 25, 26 chance of getting the letter wrong, in which case you get nothing, in which case you completely lose. So let's just take our calculator out and calculate this, and we'll round to the, to the nearest, we'll round to the nearest penny here. So let's see. It is going to be. 1 2600, so 1 divided by 2600 times, let's see, 10,045 minus 5 is going to be 10,400 times 10,400. That's your net profit when you win the grand prize. And then you're going to have plus 1 divided by 26 minus 1 divided by 2600 times your, your net profit for the small prize is 100 minus 5, which is 95. And then finally, plus, plus 25 26. So 25 divided by 26. Actually, I'll put parentheses around here just to make it consistent. So 25 divided by 26 times that net payoff. When you get nothing, well, you have to pay out $5 and you got nothing in return times negative 5. Actually, I don't know if it's going to recognize that as time. So I'll just write times, times negative 5. And then let me delete that. And we deserve a drum roll now. We get a expected net profit of playing as $2 and $2.81 if we round up to the nearest penny. So this is all going to be equal to $2.81. And so this is actually a, a very unusual lottery game where you have an ex a positive expected net profit. As a player, usually the person operating the lottery, the state, who are the casino, whoever it is, they're the ones who have the expected net profit, and then the player has the expected net loss. But this actually would make rational sense to play, which, most, which is not the case with most lottery games. That if by playing, you actually expect a $2.81 net profit.